this is David. Today we're talking about Azure Logic Apps. Logic Apps are workflows that are designed to run in the Azure Cloud, so they can take advantage of the reliability, the scalability of Azure. They provide a couple of other advantages as well. One is that uh, they provide a graphical design server, so you can drag and drop shapes onto it, set properties of those shapes, and visually see how your workflow is laid out. The other is that there are connectors to a lot of other systems. So for example, if you wanted to connect to a database, whether that's a relational database like SQL Server or Oracle or MySQL or a non-relational database like um, Cosmos DB or Mongo or Azure Table Storage, you can do so. There's, there are shapes for that. Uh, there are shapes for dropping messages on queues uh, for inst external systems like um, SAP, for things like sending email and communicating with the event grids and HTTP requests, calling functions, all sorts of things. There's things that you could just add a shape to it and that's code that you don't have to write. Just set some properties for it and your work is done. I will create a logic app here in the portal. I've already done a little bit of work here. I've created a resource group and in that resource group I've created a an Azure storage account here. In that storage account, I actually have a couple of things. I have a couple of tables that I've created. So if I expand the tables in the Storage Explorer, you'll see there's a table called All Customers. It's empty right now. And Big Customers. What I want to do is I want to have a Logic app that's going to fire off when the user posts to a URL, and they're going to post some data to that URL. That data will look like this this JSON right here. I'll have an ID, a first name, a last name, and a quantity. And I want to save all that. In fact, I'll assume this customer, this is a customer. I'll always save that information to the all customers table. And I'll only save it to the big customer tables if this quantity is above some threshold. So I want to put them in a special place if they are a big customer. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, like anything in Azure, we start to create something by clicking on this big green plus button. I could search for logic apps here or I could just go down to integration which is where I know it is and select the very first thing logic app. I'll give it a name. I'll call this one DG test logic. That's good. That works. Um, it has to be unique and then in the I'll put it in the same resource group as my storage account. I'll leave the rest of it as the defaults. I can add log analytics later if I want to. And this just takes us a few seconds, so I'll wait until it will create a brand new empty logic app for me. And once I do that, I'll be able to start designing. There we go. Maybe 10 seconds. Go to resource. Here is my empty logic app. And it opens up with this nice little uh, design surface here. Not a design surface, this little welcome page. Uh, there's a video here that uh, shows some animation how to create a logic app or what the meaning of logic apps is. Um, there are some quick starts here. So, for example, uh, if you wanted this thing to be, this logic app to be triggered whenever you receive a message on a service bus queue, you would select this. If you wanted to set it on a timer, you'd select that. Uh, HTTP requests here, etc., and so on. And there's also some more filled out templates here. I'd encourage you to just explore those and get an idea of what kind of things Logic Apps are capable of. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create one that is triggered when an HTTP request is received. So the user posts to a URL and automatically they will be um, it'll, it'll fire off this thing. Now we don't know the URL yet, it's going to generate it when we're done. If we don't like it, we could go into Azure Functions and create a proxy for that. Um, I have a video on that also in this series. Um, but I'll just leave this as, as a default right here. And in um, click here and I, and I can specify what kind of data are they going to post to it. And I could type in, there's a schema definition that I could type in here, but it's much easier if I just copy and paste a sample payload, which I just showed you right here. So if I, this is the data I'm going to send to it. I'll just modify the values, and I click Done, and there's my schema. It knows that there's an ID, and that's a string, and a first, that's a string, last is a string, and quantity is an integer. And that looks pretty good. I could change this if I wanted to. If, for example, I didn't mean it to be an integer, maybe I want it to be a, uh, a float or something, I could do that. So that's my trigger. Now I want to do uh, add a step to this. So the first thing I'll do is I'll, put, I'll, I'll store this data into Azure Table Storage. And I've got here Azure Table Storage. I can search for it up here, or I can 
go by categories. I've used it recently, so it shows up on my recent Azure table storage. There's a lot of things I can do with table storage. What I want to do is to insert an entity. In fact, I'll do an insert or replace. In case I get the same ID again, I'll just replace that one. So it asks me uh, to create a connection to one of my Azure storage accounts. I'll give this a name. I'll call it uh, connection one. That's fine. There's the storage account that I just created here. Create that and then ask me which table I want to insert this into all customers. Partition key, the way that Azure Storage works is that it has a partition key and a row key and the combination of those two have to uniquely identify each entity in this um, in the table. So I'll, uh, I'll say partition key is all. I don't really care much about that. It's the row key that's actually going to identify it. So in the row key I sp I'm going to select this ID. If I didn't see this this thing here, I would click this and this toggles it on and off. I want the ID. That's going to be my row key. So I'll assume that's unique. If it's not, then I'll go back and update an existing one. And then the JSON that I want will be just the body of this text. I want to store all that stuff. So let me just grab the body of what's going to be posted. All right, I'm done with this step. Let's add another step. And this step will be the insert into the big customers, but only if I have a, uh, if the quantity is above a certain amount. So let's just pick an amount, 100. The quantity is 100 or less, it's not a big customer. If it's over 100, then we'll call them a big customer. So I have in controls, I have all sorts of program flow logic, like loops and scoping, uh, some switch statements. I want conditionals, the equivalent of a if statement in most programming languages. So this condition here, it'll have a true branch and a false branch, and the condition will be whenever that quantity field is greater than 100. So I'll click here, and in my dynamic content, I will select QTY right here. And over here, let me hide that. I'll say is greater than, I'll say is greater than or equal to, all right. 100. Good. That's it. And in the f if it's not greater than that, I won't do anything. I've already. I'll just leave it in the the um, uh, all customers table. But if it is, I want to insert it into the big customers table. So once again, I'll select Azure Table Storage. Insert or replace entity. This time, I'll specify big customers as my table. And my partition key, I'll just hard code the word big in here. The row will also be the ID that comes in from my JSON. And the entity itself will be the entire body here. I want to capture the first name, last name, and quantity. All right, we're good to go here. If I just run this right now, it's going to cause a problem because it's going to be looking for quantity and it's going to be looking for th things that just don't exist, like the ID, because I, I'm not sending it any data. I'll show you that right here. That it... it checks the trigger, so it sent a, a post request, but it didn't know what kind of data to send to it. And so what I should see is just the trigger firing and then errors after that right here. So an error right here. And the reason was because it couldn't find the um, uh, the ID statement. All right, uh, let's actually test it for real. If I go into here, actually, if I go to the designer and then go into here, it will show me this URL. So it generated the URL for me. I'll copy that, and I'm going to paste that here into Postman right here. So right here, right here, I will paste in that. And in this, I want to specify this is a post to that URL. In the body of that post, let's do, let's just do um, this right here. Right there. ID is one, first is David, last is GR, and quantity is 100. I said greater than or equal to 100 is a big customer. So this should go into the big customer table and into the all customer tables. So I'll go there. I also want to make sure in the headers that I specify that the um, 
content type is application JSON. Otherwise, it might just think it's just a, a string of text. It won't recognize it as JSON. So I explicitly added this here in Postman. You don't have to use Postman. In the real world, you probably write an application to do this, but Postman or Fiddler or other tools like that are really good for testing any kind of web service calls. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Let's send it right here. I think I've got it all set up correctly. I got back a 202. That's good. Let me go back into the Azure portal, and I'll check to see if I go over to my storage account, which I can get to from the resource group. Here's my storage account, and dig into the Storage Explorer and check these tables out. Here's all customers. There's one row right there, and you can see that row key is one. First is David, ID is one, last is GR, quantity is 100, everything went here. Um, this was greater than or equal to 100, so I should see one in here as well. I hard-coded the word big for the partition key. I used the ID as the row key. There's a timestamp. First is David. All this data is exactly the same. I can send it some more data, and this time I'll change it. And in the body, I'll specify that my ID is 2. I'll put my brother in here, Dan. And he's not a big customer. He's only quantity 90. And everything else I'll leave the same. I'll send it to the same URL. It worked. It was accepted. It should kick off this workflow. And now if I go back into all customers, you'll see that there are two customers here, one and two. And there's David and there's Dan, and the quantities are 190. If I go into big customers, my conditional logic should kick in, and you'll see that Dan did not get added here, that he's only in for the, the, the all customers, but he's, he's not a big deal like his big brother Dave is. And, and that's it. You can extend this by adding more connectors, adding more controllers. You can change the type of trigger that's firing it off. Um, it's really up to your imagination what you can do with these things. In this video, I've shown you how to create a basic logic app and use it to get data from HTTP request and put it into Azure storage and use conditional logic. This is David. Thank you for watching.